In this video, I want to talk about how to interpret percentiles. Percentiles are something you're going to see a lot in your future classroom. So let's make sure we really understand what they mean. Let's take a real basic example for a minute. Let's say that you figure out that your score is in the 75th percentile. What exactly does that mean? One way to think about percentile is thinking about it as a ranking. So if I were to rank all these um, students, let's just say, in a row, and let's say there's 100 of them, I would be number 75 if I'm in the 75th percentile. Another way to think about that is I scored better than 75% of the sample that I'm comparing that against. Remember, a rank, I'm comparing it against a group of something. I want to make sure that we're on the same page. The 75th percentile has absolutely nothing to do with my overall score. So this doesn't mean that I scored, let's say, a 75 as a C. It doesn't mean I scored a C on the test. It also doesn't mean that um, I've mastered 75% of the content, right? This is literally a ranking score. Let's look at another one and see if we can analyze that. What if I'm dealing with a score that's in the 12th? percentile. I want you to think to yourself, is that going to be at the high end of my class? In other words, are they doing better than the majority or they are they doing worse than the majority? If a test score is in the 12th percentile, we can only assume that they are doing better than 12% of the sample. Now, another way to think about this is what percentage is doing better, right? If this score is in the 12th percentile, then that means that 88% of the sample is doing better. Okay, sometimes if you're a parent, we've heard percentiles in the doctor's office, right? And so maybe you have a really petite baby and they're in the 12th percentile for height. We could interpret that as saying that they are taller than 12% of the babies in that same uh, age band. So they obviously lump them together. It wouldn't make sense for them to compare a two week old with a year old baby, right? There's gonna be a big difference. One thing we need to consider when we're looking at percentiles is what is our sample, right? For instance, let's take our example of the baby that's taller. If we're comparing this baby to the daycare group, and let's say the daycare has six week old babies up until three year olds. Well, if we're looking at a rank of our four week old against that very broad sample, probably percentile isn't gonna make a huge difference, right? They're probably going to be down towards the, you know, single digit percentiles because they're being compared against three year olds. Likewise, when we interpret percentiles in the classroom, we need to keep this in mind as well. Let's take an example here. In front of you here, I've got some data from a map test. This is a benchmark test. And you can see this is um, a student who is progressing. And if you take a look right here at um, the percentile range on the right hand side, you can see that they're going to give you a percentile range for the student. So if I look at this very top one for spring 19, it says that I've got 86 for the low end of the range, 94 for the high end, and the student is scoring in the 90th percentile. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking, wow, this student is rocking it. They're scoring in the 90th percentile for this benchmark test, meaning that they scored better than 90% of the other kindergartners that took this same exam. I would agree that I think this definitely tells us that they are doing better than the majority of the population at this school. However, let me point out a few things that could affect our interpretation of percentiles. Let's take a look at an honors math class in high school. And if we're looking at a 90th percentile score and the scores are um, only being reflected in that honors math class, they're doing really well. They're scoring better than 90% of their peers in that honors math class. Let me go to the other end of the spectrum though because I want you to see how this might look a little deceiving. Let's now take a look at if I have a student, again, in that same honors math class that's in the 20th percentile. Now, at first glance, a parent might be concerned about this, right? 20th percentile, wow, they didn't do very well. Ah, 
ah, hold on. They're doing better than 20% of the students in that honors math class. Chances are the student test scores in that honors math class are going to be higher anyways than if we were to mix them up with a heterogeneous group in the whole population. Again, this is really important to know what is it when we talk about percentiles and them being a rank, it's really important to know what we are comparing them against. To finish today, I want to make sure and make you aware of a couple of things. When I think about the 50th percentile in my data set, what's another name for that? Hopefully you said the median. Remember, the median is the middle of our data set, so the 50th percentile would also be the median. Can you think about the 25th percentile? What would that be, again, thinking back to box and whisker plots. Hopefully you said the lower quartile or Q1. That would be our 25th percentile. How about 75th percentile? What would that be? Quartile three, you're exactly right, or the upper quartile, right? So percentiles can help us to see where our data is at in comparison to the sample. And they're really used in the classroom when we look at benchmark tests and things like that. Um, but my number one note about percentiles is make sure you understand what they are ranking them against. Is it against the whole grade level? Is it against your class? Is it against a national ranking? These are all important to know when we're dealing with percentiles. I hope you found this video helpful and you've now got a better idea on how to interpret percentiles in your future classroom.